Hi, I'm Katie Still. I'm the local history librarian at Appleton Public Library, and today I'm going to quickly show you how to search for an address in census records to find those hard to find ancestors. So as you probably know, census records may be incorrectly indexed or have various misspellings on all the names, making them really difficult to find your ancestors. In some cases, it might be easy enough for you to just browse through a small town or a village, looking at all the entries page by page to find your ancestors. But if your ancestors lived in a city, going page to page is going to be extremely time consuming. Thankfully, there's a solution. If you have an address for your ancestor, you can search for that address using the census records in our search box. It is easiest to do this if you're using Ancestry or Heritage Quest. For Ancestry.com, you can either use a paid subscription or use the library edition, which is available in library use only for free. You could also use Heritage Quest, which is available for free from home using your library card. If you already don't have an address for an ancestor, you want to be sure to check your existing genealogy records first. So check those birth, marriage, and death records, those military records, old letters, or other records that you might have that might list an address for your ancestor. One of the best places to find an address is going to be in city directories, and those are published almost yearly or every other year. And many, thankfully, have been digitized and are available on the main genealogy websites like Ancestry and Heritage Quest, or if you have Appleton ancestors, we've got quite a few in our University of Wisconsin Digital Collections, which you can learn more about using in our YouTube video, also linked in this playlist. Even if you can't find an address for that exact census year that you're looking for, try finding a record that's going to be as close as possible to that census year, and then check the census using that address that you found, because maybe your ancestor didn't move from the time that record was created to the time they were enumerated in the census, so it's worth a shot. Now I'm going to show you a live demonstration of how I'm going to try to find my ancestors in the 1900 census. So for years I've been trying to locate the August Kepschel family who lived in Chicago, Illinois in 1900. Thankfully I found an address for the family on a birth record of one of the children which shows the family living at 1234 West 21st Street in 1900. So we're going to go into Heritage Quest and I'm going to show you what it looks like to try to find the family. So if you go to our website, apl.org, and click on eLibrary, that's going to give you an A to Z listing of all of our databases. From here, you can click on Genealogy to narrow down to just the genealogy ones. And then we're going to scroll down until we find Heritage Quest, which is right here. If you're using the site from home, this is where it's going to ask for your library card, or if you don't have a library card, you can select the state of Wisconsin and type in your zip code because anybody who lives in Wisconsin has access to this database for free. Then to get to the census records, we're going to want to click on search in the upper left corner and census. So you can see whatever year you want to search in the US Census is the year you're going to click on. So I'm looking for my ancestors in 1900. Now first I'm going to show you what it looks like when I try to do that keyword search of putting in my ancestor's name. I'm going to maybe put in his birth year and his birth location. I can put in um, that I know that they lived in Chicago. And I can click that exact box because I know exactly that they lived there. And then maybe I want to put, oh, I know his spouse's name is Amelia. I know my second great grandfather. He's also living there in that time. So let me put that in and then click search. You can see I didn't get any results. So what I can do is I can edit the search and maybe I'll take some stuff out. Maybe I'll take out some of that data or take out his wife's name, his kid's name, and maybe just search for him. And I get two people, but neither one of them match my ancestor. So what I want to do is I want to take that address that I had before, and I want to search in the census using that address. So if I do a completely new search, I'm going to go back into that 1900 census, so what I'm going to do instead of searching by name is I'm going to search by address. So you can leave the name information blank. I still want you to put in the city that you're looking for so that you can narrow down because of course there might be multiple different cities with the same street names. 
So I'm going to limit it to exact and click on that place. And then if I scroll down here, I'm going to leave all this stuff blank. You can see right here, there's something that says house number. Well, this is where I can put in 1234, which I know is their address. So it's 1234 West 21st Street. You don't want to put in the street in here. I mean, you can, but sometimes you still might have a lot of um, results to go through. Instead, there's a keyword box up here. So this is where I'm going to put West 21st up there. I'm going to click exact on the house number. And then I'm going to go down here to click the search box. Now you can see I have 352 results, so that's not a ton to go through, but that's still way too many than I want to go through. So what I could do is I can edit my search, and since I know that this is a man that I'm looking for, I might select the gender and narrow it down to that and click search. So now you see I only have 186 people. So now I can go through all the results and see, hey, do any of these look like it could be August Capsule? And right away I see the first result and it says Kishwil. Well, that kind of seems a little similar to Capsule. So let me click on that record and view it. And I'm gonna um, pull it up. You can click on the image to get it up. And I see right in here, look at it. It matches his birth date. I know his wife's name's Amelia. Well, Melia maybe is a uh, you know, nickname. I can see the kids' names. Well, these all match the kids' names and the birth dates of my ancestor. And wouldn't you know, you can see the house address right here is 1234 and then West 21st Place, not street, um, but this is my family. So. After lots and lots of searching using that address search, I was able to finally find them. Of course, the name is misspelled. His first name, um, instead of being August, which is it, what his real name was, it's listed as Otto. So maybe that's a nickname or maybe the census taker just didn't hear um, him say it very well and, and thought he said Otto. Or maybe his German accent was very thick that day and he put Otto instead of August. You might be wondering if this works for other census years or if you just have a partial address. So it definitely does. I'm going to show you an example of trying to find my great grandfather, Melvin Stilp, in the 1920 census, if all I know that he lived on Washington Street in Nina, Wisconsin. So now we're going to go into the census. Again, we're going to go into Heritage Quest, and instead of 1900, I'm going to click on 1920. And again, we're going to put in that location. And we're going to click exact to this place. And then we're going to scroll down. And instead of putting anything in the house number, I'm going to leave that blank, but I'm going to put Washington in there. And I'm going to click exact. And then I'm going to click on search. And so you can see again, we've got, you know, 260 results. That's, you know, not a ton, but um, a little bit more than maybe I want to go through. So again, I always recommend maybe narrowing it down by mail, or maybe I could use one of these other things to narrow it down, for example. So maybe I can put in 1903 is his birth year, and he was born in Wisconsin. So let me put in that data and see if that helps me narrow down some of the results. So now I only have 32 people to look through. That's a lot less. And I can see going through those re these results quickly, right here I see a Melvin Stelp. That's very similar to my ancestor's name. And I can see Lida. I know that's his mom's name. So this seems to be my ancestor. So again, I can click on this record to pull it up and see Melvin in the census. And so now I can see him in the census and I can see that house number and right on the side you can see it says Washington Street so now I know they lived at 409 Washington Street in Nina. I hope that helped you be able to find your ancestors, but if you need to learn a little bit more about researching the census or learn about some more tips and tricks about using the census records, be sure to check out our YouTube recording all about census records that we did a couple weeks ago that I'm going to link right here for you to be able to click on, or you can find it right in this playlist. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email address is on the screen, kstilp at apl.org or you can give our reference desk a call at 920-832-6173. Good luck researching.